books and traditions of the Yazidis by Isia Joseph. Continues. The Appendix to Part 1. Now, let me remind you that Satanism is a variety of beliefs and practices. And sort of what we're seeing here is the piety of Satan. They fast for three days in a year from morning to evening. The fast falls in December according to the Oriental calendar. They have no prayer except what is mentioned above, such as the referring to the sun and the moon and asking help from sheikhs and holy places when they say, O Sheikh Adi, O Sheikh Shams, and the like. They are all forbidden to teach their children anything with the exception of two stanzas which they teach their children out of necessity and because it is traditional. A story is told about them by reliable people. Once, when Sheikh Nasser was preaching in a village at Mount Sinjar, there was a Christian mason and audience who, seeing the house filled with people, thought they were really going to pray. Then he pretended to take a nap, that he might amuse himself with what he should hear. He knew the Kurdish language. When the Christian seemed to be asleep, but was really awake and listening, Sheikh Nasir began to preach, saying, Once the great God appeared to me in a vision. He was angry at Jesus because of a dispute with him. He therefore caught him and imprisoned him in a den, which had no water. Before the mouth of the den he placed a great stone. Jesus remained in the den a long time, calling upon the prophets and the saints for help and asking their aid. Everyone who succored Jesus asked went to beg the great God to release him. But God did not grant the request. Jesus therefore remained in a sorrowful state, knowing not what to do. After this, the preacher remained silent for a quarter of an hour, and thus a great silence prevailed in the house. Then he went on to say, O oh, poor Jesus, why are you so forgotten? So neglected, do you not know that all the prophets and the saints have no favor with God unto Malak Da'us? Why have you forgotten him and not called upon him? Saying this, the preacher again remained silent as before. Again he continued, Jesus remained in the den when he happened to remember Malak Ta'us. Then he sought his aid, praying, O Malak Ta'us, I have been in this den for some time. I am imprisoned. I have sought the help of all the saints, and none of them could deliver me. Now save me from this den. When Malak Ta'us heard them, he descended from heaven to earth, quicker than the twinkling of an eye, removed the stone from the top of the den, and said to Jesus, Come up, behold, I have brought thee out. Then both went up to heaven. Then the great God saw Jesus. He said to him, O Jesus, who brought thee out of this den, who brought thee here without my permission? Jesus answered and said, Malak Ta'us brought me of the den and up here. Then God said, Had it been another, I would have punished him. But Malak Ta'us is much beloved by me. Remain here for the sake of my honor. So Jesus remained in heaven. The preacher added, Notice that those who were without do not, do not like Malak Ta'us. Know ye that in the resurrection he will not liken them either, and he will not intercede for them. But as for us, he will put us all in a tray, carry us upon his head, and take us into heaven, while we are in the tray on his head. When the congregation heard this, they rose up, kissed his clothes and feet, and received his blessings. Now the views of the Yazidis concerning the birth of Jesus and the explanation of the name of Apostle Peter are found in one of their stories, which runs thus, Verily Mary, the virgin mother of Jesus, begot Jesus in a manner, unlike the rest of women. She begot him from her right side, between her clothes and her body. At that time when the Jews had a custom that if a woman gave birth, all her relatives and neighbors would bring her presents. The women would call, carrying in their right hand a plate of fruits, which were found in that season. And in the left hand, they would carry a stone. This custom was a very ancient one. Therefore, when Mary the Virgin gave birth to Jesus, the wife of Jonah, who is the mother of Peter, came to her, and according to the custom, carried a plate of fruit in her right hand and a stone in her left. As she entered and gave Mary the plate, behold, the stone which was in her left hand begat a male. She called his name Simon Chifa, that is, son of the stone. Christians do not know these things as we do. They have a story explaining the word heretic. It is this. 
When the great God created the heavens, he put all the keys of the treasures and the mansions there in the hands of, of Malak Ta'us, and commanded him not to open a certain mansion. But he, without the knowledge of God, opened the house and found a piece of paper on which was written, Thou shalt worship thy God alone, and him alone shalt thou serve. He kept the paper with him and allowed no one else to know about it. Then God created an iron ring and hung it in the air between the heaven and the earth. Afterwards he created Adam, the first Malak Ta'us, refused to worship Adam when God commanded him to do so. He showed him the rented paper, which he took from the mansion, and said, See what is written here? Then the great God said, It may be that you have opened the mansion, which I forbade you to open. He answered, Yes. And God said to him, You are a heretic, because you have disobeyed me and transgressed my commandment. From this we know that God speaks in the Kurdish language. That is from the meaning of this saying, Go into the iron ring which I, thy God, have made for whomsoever does contrary to my commandment and disobeys me. When one criticizes such a story as this by saying that God drove Malak Ta'us from heaven and sent him to hell because of his pride before God the Most High, they do not admit that such is the case. They answer, It is possible that one of us, in his anger, should drive out his child from his house and let him wait until the next day before bringing him back. Of course not. Similar is the relation of the great god to Malak Ta'us. Verily he loves him exceedingly. You do not understand the books which you read. The gospel says, No one ascended up to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. No one came down from heaven, but Malak Ta'us and Christ. From this we know that the great god has been reconciled to Malak Ta'us, who went up to heaven, just as God came down from heaven and went up again. And, you know, this is related through a preacher, so... Um, the Bible says that preachers can lie to convert people, so... It, yeah, it really does say that. St. Paul and Christian lying. I, I don't remember what the title of my the video that I talked about that was. The following is a story from a Kochak. It is related at one time that there was no rain in the village of Ba Ashika. In this village, there was a Yezidi whose name was Kochak Baruru. There were also some saints with men of vision dwelling there. They gathered to ask Baru about the rain. He told them, Wait till tomorrow, that I may see it. They came to him on the next day and said, What have you done concerning the question of rain? We are exceedingly alarmed by reason of its being withheld. He answered, I went up to heaven last night and entered into the divan where the great god, Sheikh Adi, and some of the other sheikhs and righteous men were sitting. The priest, Isak, was sitting besides God. The great God said to me, What do you want, O Kochak Baru? Why have you come here? I said to him, My lord, this year the rain has been withheld from us till now, and all our servants are poor and needy. We beseech thee to send us rain as thou as thy wont. He remained silent and answered me not. I repeated the speech twice and thrice, beseeching him. Then I turned to the sheikhs who sat there, asking their help and intercession. The great God answered me, Go away until we think it over. I came down and do not know what took place after I descended from heaven. You may go to the priest, Isak, and ask him what was said after I came down. They went down to the priest and told him the story and asked him what was said after Kochak Baru came down. This priest, Isak, was a great joker. He answered them, After the Kochak came down, I begged God for rain on your behalf. It was agreed that scarce seven days. After six or seven days, he would send it. They waited accordingly, and by a strange coincidence, at the end of the period, it rained like a flood for some time. Seeing this, the people believed in what they were told, and honored the priest, Isaac, looking at him as one of the saints, thinking he must have Yazidi blood in him. For more than twenty years, the story has been told as one of the tales of their saints. So there are certain malleable parts of their culture. Once Sheikh Adi bin Musafir and his marids were entertained by God in heaven. When they arrived, they did not find straw for their animals. Therefore, Sheikh Adi ordered his marids to carry straw from his threshing floor on the earth. As if it was being transported, some fell on the way, and has remained as a sign in heaven until our day. It is known as the road of the straw man, 
They think that prayer is in the heart, therefore they do not teach their children about it. And in their book, neither is any, there any rule regarding prayer, nor is prayer considered a religious obligation. Some assert that at one time Sheikh Adi, in company with Sheikh Abdul Qadr, made a pilgrimage to Mecca when he remained four years. After his absence, Malik Ta'us appeared, appeared to them. The two sheikhs, in his symbol, he dictated some rules to them and taught them many things. He was hidden from them. Four years later, Sheikh Adi returned from Mecca, but they refused and would not accept him. They asserted that he had died or ascended to heaven. He remained with them, but was without his former aspect. When the time of his death came, Malik Ta'us appeared to them and declared, This is Sheikh Adi himself. Honor him. Then they honored him and buried him with due veneration, and made his tomb a place of pilgrimage. In their estimation, it is a more excellent spot than Mecca, everyone who is under obligation to visit once a year at least. In addition to this, they give a sum of money through the sheikhs to obtain, to obtain satisfaction that Sheikh Adi may be pleased with them. Whoever does this, not, is disobedient. And so we definitely see some... Um, Sometimes the experience that the demon, that the, you know, the fire beings could give to a person is, you know, what, you know, the ready for in that culture. Moreover, it is said that the reason why the pilgrimage to his tomb is regarded as excellent by us and by God is that in the resurrection, Sheikh Adi will carry it in a tray, carry in a tray all the Yazidis upon his head and take them into paradise without requiring them to give account or answer. Say this this is probably where some of the Jesus stuff comes from. Therefore they regard pilgrimage to his tomb as a religious duty greater than the pilgrimage to Mecca. There are some domes, huts, around the tomb of Sheikh Adi. They are for the purpose of receiving blessings from the tomb. They are all attributed to the great sheikhs as the hut of Abdul Qadr al Jalani. But of Sheikh Babid al Ban the hut of Sheikh Shamsuddin, the hut of Sheikh Mansur al Halaj, and the hut of Sheikh Hassan al Basri. There are some other huts. Each hut is a banner made of calico. It is a sign of conquest and victory. Eating of deer's meat is forbidden to them, they say, because the deer's eyes resemble the eyes of Sheikh Adi. Barely his virtues are well known, and his praiseworthy qualities are traditions handed down from generation to generation. He was the first to accept the Yazidi religion. He gave them the rules of the religious sect and founded the office of the sheikh. In addition to this, he was renowned for his devotion to the religious exercise. From Mount Lalish, from Mount Lalish, he used to, enter, uh, to hear the preaching of Abd al Badr al Jalani in Baghdad. He began to draw a circle on the ground and to say to the religious ones, Whosoever wants to hear the preaching of al Jalal of al Jilani, let him enter within this circle. The following custom which we have began with him. If we wish to swear to anyone, a sheikh draws, draws a circle, and he who is to take an oath enters into it. See, through this, many traditions would have been uh, preserved, you could say. At one time, passing by a garden, Sheikh Adi asked about lettuce, and as no one answered, he said, Hus, hush. For this reason, lettuce is forbidden and not eating, and not eaten. As regards fasting, they say about the month of Ramadan that it was dumb and death. Therefore, when God commanded Muslims to fast, Muslimin to fast, uh, to fast, he likewise commanded the Yazidis, saying to them in the Kurdish language, Sese, meaning three. Muhammad's al muslimin did not understand this. The take up for Sah, 30. For this reason, they, the Yazidis, fast three days. Moreover, they believe that they are eating, drinking, and other earthly pleasures in the next world. Some hold that the rule of heaven is in God's hands, but the rule of earth is in Sheikh Adi's hands. Being excessively beloved by God, he bestowed upon them according to Adi's desire. Say, Satan, uh, the uh, Shaitan uh, cast out of a place, sometimes bestows on a leader 
not only what works in their condition as terms of these uh, satanic prophets, but also, you know, puts them in a, you know, use, uses them as, um, okay, I'm not articulating well, so I'm going to leave that. They believe in the transmigration of souls. If you trace this back to the, um, you know, the 11,500 BCE evidence and some other stuff of what you can call Yazidi culture, then clearly, and if you follow the date of their calendar, clearly it predates the Greeks, the Hindus, the uh, Egyptians in terms of the reference to reincarnation. This is convinced by the fact that when the soul of Mansur al-Halaj parted from the, his body, when the Caliph of Baghdad killed him and cast his head into the water, his soul floated upon the water by a wonderful chance and a strange happening. The sister of the said Mansur went to fill his jar. The soul of her brother entered it. Without knowing what had happened, she came with it to the house. Being tired, she felt thirsty and drank from the jar. At the moment, her soul, at that moment, the soul of her brother entered her, but she did not perceive it until she became pregnant. She gave birth to a son who resembled Sheikh Mansur himself. He became her brother according to birth and her son according to imputation. The reason why they do not use drinking vessels, which have narrow mouths or net like cover, is that when one drinks water from them, they make a sound. When the head of Sheikh Mansur was thrown into the water, it gurgled. In his honor, they do not use small jars with narrow necks. They assert that they expect a prophet who will come from Persia to, an, to annul the law of Muhammad and abrogate Islam. They believe that there are seven gods, and each god administers the universe for 10,000 years, and that one of these gods is Lesferos, the chief of the fallen angels, who also bears the name Malak Ta'us. They make him a graven image after the form of a cock and worship it. Um, going back even further than those 10,000 years, you find, well, most of it's younger than this, but um, this seven-feathered peacock form. But very, well, actually, I, well, the, the seven form, but the seven, uh, the, the lead peacocks in particular, lead is a sacred thing to shaitan. They play the tambourine and dance before it, before it to make it rejoice with them. The walls travel within the Yazidis' villages to collect money, at which time they take it into the houses that it may bless and honor them. Some say that Sheikh Adi is a deity. Others say that he's like a vizier, a vizier to God. A, a vizier to God. To him all things are referred. This is Malak Ta'us' age. The ruling of administrative power is... In his hands until the thousandth year and you know this is what the calendar is based upon is that the peacock manifestation when the time comes to an end he will deliver the power to the next entity to rule and administer until another thousand years shall be ended and so on until the seventh entity and yet there is an accord and love among these entities None is jealous of the one who may rule and administer the world for a period of 10,000 years. They have a book named Al-Jilwa that they ascribe to Sheikh Adi, and they suffer no one who is not one of them to read it. Mention is made in some other books that the first cause is the Supreme God, who before he created this world was enjoying himself over the seas, and in his hand was a great white pearl to which he was playing, with which he was playing, when he resolved to cast into the sea and when he did so, this world came into being. Moreover, they imagined themselves not to be of the same seed from which the rest of mankind sprung, but they are begotten of the son of Adam, who was born to Adam of his spittle. For this reason, they imagined themselves nobler and more pleasing to the entities than others. Some say they have taken fa fasting and sacrifice from Islam, baptism from Christians, prohibition of food from the Jews, their way of worship from the idolaters, the assimilation of doctrine from the Rafibi Shiites human sacrifice and transmigration from the pre-Islamic faith of the, of the Arabs and from the Sabaeans. 
When they say that the spirit of man goes forth from his body, it enters into another man if it be just, if it be unjust, into an animal. Now, if you deny the theory of of monotheism really being all the same religion, um, the Yazidi group, um, the various groups, not not this group in particular, it could be said that it is the most influential in history.